Welcome to another behind the scenes tour on our video tours. Each and every day we bring you a brand new one and each and every day you have a job to do which is to share it with as many people as possible because that helps the Lake Superior Railroad Museum when you do. So we thank you for that. Over our tours we've told you about everything that goes on the tracks. We've talked about engines and cars, passenger coaches, freight equipment. We've talked about speeders. Everything that goes on the rails we've talked about. So I thought today we'd talk about the rails themselves. Did you ever wonder why they were this far apart and not this far apart or that far apart? Well that story goes back about 2,000 years to ancient Rome. The Romans traveled by horse-drawn war chariots and wagons and they put two horses side by side. So of course the wagon or chariot's wheels had to be the width of those two horses hind ends. That just turned out to be four feet eight and a half inches and they made ruts in the road and that's where the wheels went. When it came time to start making train cars, well that four feet eight and a half inches was the standard of the day. And as they were using those same jigs and tools that made wagons to now make train cars, it all worked. In fact, the early trained passenger cars weren't called coaches or passenger cars, they were called wagons because that's what they were. Now more or less, the standard gauge became the standard, but that wasn't the only one. There was narrow gauge tracks. Narrow gauge tracks was everything from 1 foot 11 and 5 eighths inches all the way to 3 feet 6 inches, considered narrower gauge railroad tracks. And those were quite popular in mines or in logging situations where you had to make tight turns around different topography and certainly in mountain railroading. And one of the most famous mountain railroads that still exists today here in our country is the life-changing experience of riding on the Cumbris and Toltec. As you can see, the Cumbris and Toltec is an all-steam railway that winds its way through mountain passes, clinging to the side of steep cliffs. It is a life-changing experience to ride this railroad. And if you ever get a chance, after you ride the North Shore Scenic Railroad first, get out there and ride the Cumbris and Toltec. Narrow gauge trains were popular in Minnesota as well, even as common carriers. There was the Caledonia Mississippi and Western, which was a famous narrow gauge railway in the extreme southeast corner of Minnesota. And there was the Midland Minnesota Railway, which went from Wabasha to Zambroda. The Caledonia Mississippi and Western Railway actually has an artifact in the collection of the Lake Spear Railroad Museum a historic boxcar from that historic narrow gauge railway. It was only a 57 mile short line but some of it still does exist and we may preview that piece on a later episode here. In the meantime though these railroads weren't converted to standard gauge until the early 1900s when they were taken over by the Chicago Milwaukee St. Paul and Pacific Railway better known as the Milwaukee Road. So there are broad gauges which are the large ones five feet and better now, the best example of that is Russia, where the Tsar was so concerned about being invaded from his European neighbors that he made sure that the standard gauge for Europe was not the standard gauge in Russia, so he made the tracks wider. Of course, that gives you more room for more people, more transport, and that's why the Bay Area Rapid Transit System here in this country uses a five-foot-plus gauge, and that way they can put more people on their transit cars. What happens, though, when you have narrow gauge and standard gauge together like we do here. Reminds me of a trip I took with my dad one time in Costa Rica. We were coming down from a banana plantation up in the mountains over San Jose and it was coming down on a narrow gauge train rattling its way down that mountainside. We got about halfway down, they stopped the train, took off the power and another train backed up to us. We hooked onto that train and continued to the coast. But that train was on standard gauge track the couplers were offset so that the narrow gauge train cars could latch onto the back of the standard gauge track train cars. Those tracks coming down the mountainside in Costa Rica look something like these tracks here in our rail yard. We have three tracks because we have a narrow gauge trolley that runs on these two tracks and we still have our regular gauge equipment to run on the outside rails. This is how it looked in Costa Rica. This is how it looks in our own backyard which is a great memory I'm very indebted to have. In the meantime, join us tomorrow. Another one of our episodes will drop about noontime, your time. In the meantime, do what you're supposed to do. Cover your coughs, wash your hands, don't touch your face, and most importantly, take care of each other.